Hi, welcome to AP Calculus for East Aurora High School. Today we're going to look at some trigonometric limits. So our first couple examples are going to use direct substitution. For the first one, we want the limit as x approaches pi of x sine of x. So let's substitute pi for x. So we see that we're going to have pi times the sine of pi. This is something that we can just calculate. Think carefully. We know that sine of pi is equal to zero. So pi times zero gives us a limit of zero. So if direct substitution is possible, then we start with that method. Let's try the next one. The limit as x approaches zero of the cosine of x over one minus x. Putting 0 in for x, I've got cosine of 0 over 1 minus 0. When I do that, remember that the cosine curve begins on the y-axis at 1, so my numerator is 1, denominator is 1, so this limit is equal to 1. For both of these examples, the point referenced would be a point on the curve. So for example, 0, 1 is a point on this second curve. Now, we're going to see that sometimes we're not going to be able to do direct substitution. Let's take a look at this first one where we see the sine of x over x with the limit as x approaches 0. So I'm going to say sine of 0 over 0. We all know that sine of 0 is 0, so right now I have 0 over 0 which is my indeterminate form. That, from what we have seen in our algebraic methods, tells me that I need to do another method in order to solve this limit. Let's try making a table of values so that we can see using our graphing calculator what this limit should approach. So I'm going to set up my table so that I've got x on my top row, the function sine of x over x on the bottom row. I'm going to put 0 in the middle because that's what I'm approaching. I want to go 1 1,000th 1, to the right, so that's 0.001. 1 1,000th 1, to the left, so that's negative 0.001. 1 100th to the right, so that's 0.01. 1 100th to the left, so that's negative 0.01. 1 tenth to the right, so that's 0.1. 1 tenth to the left, so that's negative 0.1. So again, I'm always taking my limit um, and using x values to equal uh, intervals to the right and to the left of that middle number. Now, do me a favor, pause the video, enter this function into your y equals on your graphing calculator, make sure that you are in ask mode on your table, Enter these values in. Think carefully about what mode your calculator should be in. You should be in radian mode because we want to talk about our angles and radians. So go ahead and fill that into your calculator. In the meantime, I'm going to do the same thing and I'm going to fill in my table of values and see if yours matches mine. Welcome back. Compare your values in your table to the values that I got on my table. Again, you'll see that at zero you should have an error. However, if you look to the left side and to the right side, you'll see that this limit should be approaching a value of one. So we are going to say then that the limit as x approaches zero of the sine of x over x is equal to one. We're going to see a proof of that later on. If you want to take a look at it, it is in your textbook. This is a special trig limit, so this is one that we're going to have to have memorized because it's going to be one of our basic limits that we're going to use to solve other limits today and tomorrow. Now, I want you to take a minute and go ahead to your calculator, and now that you've got sine of x over x in your y equals, go ahead and do a graph of it as well. Uh, making sure that you're in um, the mode of radians, I also did zoom, and when I chose zoom number 7, it gave me the zoom trig window. 
I'm normally not a fan of zoom, but this gives me a nice enough window to be able to see what's happening to this graph as x is approaching zero. So I'm going to turn off the video for a minute and draw that graph. You do the same thing and see if we match in a couple minutes. Take a look at my graph. It should be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, but I see that when x is approaching 0, my function value is approaching 1. Now, we know because of the indeterminate form that there's actually a hole at 0, 1, but because my axes are filled in there, it's hard to see that hole. And I'm also going to have to zoom in a little bit tighter to be able to see the hole. One way of being able to see the hole a little bit better is to turn off my axes. So if I press second format, then one of the options is turn off the axes on the older calculators. The color calculators, you're going to have to go down and choose for axes um, something that says other than black. It might say blank, it might say white, so that I can then see what that um, graph looks like without the axes on there. Let's look at our next special trig limit. This one is the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x. Trying direct substitution, I'm getting 1 minus the cosine of 0 all over 0. We all know that cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 minus 1 also gives me 0 over 0, that indeterminate form. Let's once again use our table and then a graph to see what this limit should approach. So I've set my table up so that my x's are approaching 0 from the left and from the right. So it's the same table that I used in the previous example. Go ahead and change on your calculator your y equals so that it's 1 minus cosine of x over x. If you've got the calculator that has the fraction function, so if you press alpha, and then the window key, oh, I'm sorry, alpha and then the y equals key, you'll see the option for the fraction, option number one, make it a fraction, and you'll be able to use that fraction form to enter this. Otherwise, make sure that you put 1 minus cosine x completely in parentheses. Go ahead and make your table of values and come back and check with mine, and we'll talk about what this limit should equal. Compare your table with mine, and as you can see from the left and the right, the values are approaching zero. Don't be thrown off by that scientific notation that says 5 times 10 to the negative fourth. We all know that that's a number really, really small, so of course close to zero. This limit, the limit as x approaches zero of 1 minus cosine of x over x, is going to equal zero. Put a big box around this. Uh, we're going to make in class a formula sheet, and these are going to be the first two formulas that we put on them because they are formulas that you need to have memorized. Taking a look at the graph, you can also see that as x is approaching 0, I'm talking about the part of the graph that's right along the y-axis, I see that the graph crosses over at the origin. So the limit of 0 makes sense. Get into the habit of checking any limits that you do graphically and numerically using the table of values. You can always tell whether you're right or wrong with a limit by looking at the table and at the graph. Uh, sometimes you won't have your calculator at access, but when you do, please do check them. Now we're going to take a look at how to now use these special trig limits to evaluate other limits that are also indeterminate. Now, let's take a look at the next limit. The limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 4x over x. Now, you'll notice that this is really similar to that limit that we talked about a couple minutes ago. The limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x. The rule for this is that when the angle matches the denominator, then we know that this limit gives us an answer of 1. Now you can clearly see that I don't have an angle matching a denominator. We can't change the angle, but we can change the denominator. So one thing that we can go ahead and do is multiply our denominator by 4. When we do that, we now have an angle matching the denominator. But of course we can't go around willy-nilly multiplying denominators by 4 wherever we want to. If we multiply the denominator by 4, we're also going to have to multiply the numerator by 4. 
I'm going to take that constant 4 and multiply it out in front of the whole limit. So I'm going to rewrite this now as 4 times the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 4x over 4x. This limit right here is in the form of the limit that we just found using our table. When the angle matches the denominator, that limit is going to be equal to 1. So I know that that's got an answer of 1. Don't forget about the 4 that I'm multiplying by out in front. So 4 times 1 tells me that the answer for this limit is equal to 4. I would encourage you to go ahead and put that in your graphing calculator. Check your table of values, check the graph, and see that that function approaches the number 4. Let's go ahead and look at number 2, which is similar. The limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of 2x over x. Again, I see that I'm of the form the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x. That answer is equal to 0. And again, I know that when the angle matches the denominator, that limit is equal to 0. Again, I have an angle not matching the denominator, so I can go ahead and multiply the denominator by 2. Multiplying the numerator by 2, I'm going to put it right out in front, so I see that this limit is equal to 0. 2 times 0 gives me an answer of 0. Now, it's necessary to show this work when you're doing these limits. Show the multiplication by 2 in both the numerator and denominator. Show that your angle matches your denominator because that's the only way that this limit actually works. You'll notice that number 3 is slightly different. In number 3, we've got the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over 10x. This time, my angle is just a 1x, and I'd like to have just a 1x in my denominator. What this shows me is that I have an extra factor of 10 in the denominator. So I can take that extra factor of 10 and move it out in front as a 1 tenth in front of the limit. So I now have 1 tenth, the limit as x approaches 0, of the sine of x over x. And again, I was allowed to break that denominator apart. I'm never going to be allowed to break an angle apart, but I can break a denominator apart. This limit we know to be 1, so 1 tenth times 1 is giving me 1 tenth. Again, I would encourage you to go ahead and look at that on your table of values and your graphing calculator and see that this limit is approaching 1 tenth. Now let's look at our third special trig limit. This time it's the limit as x approaches 0 of the tangent of x over x. Notice the same form as what we had with the sine. Again, it's going to be indeterminate because the tangent of 0 is 0, and 0 over 0 is indeterminate. Take a second and fill in your table and see if you can figure out what limit this is going to approach. So I set up a table there for you. You go ahead and make your table on your graphing calculator and come back and see if you can figure out what that limit is equal to. Welcome back. Did you find that this limit is also equal to 1, just like the one that we had for sine? I hope you've noticed by now that all of these special trig limits are as x is approaching 0. If x is approaching anything else, we have to do direct substitution. Now we're going to, this will be our special, our third special trig limit, so you're going to want to have all three of those boxed in in front of you and really get used to those, memorize those. They're going to be really important over the next few days here. Now let's see how we can go ahead and use a limit like this. So if I want the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine squared of x over tangent of, I'm sorry, times tangent of x over 6x cubed. Substituting 0 in for x, I'm getting sine squared of 0, tangent of 0 over 6 times 0 cubed. 
you'll notice, of course, that we do get the indeterminate form 0 over 0. Our goal is to try to use these special trig limits and see if there's a way that we can get our special trig limits, use those answers to solve this problem. Well, one way of approaching this is to rewrite this as a product. So, for example, I could say the limit as x approaches 0 of... Well, in the numerator, I've got sine of x times sine of x times tangent of x. If each of those had an x underneath them, I would be able to do the limit as x approaches 0. And isn't it handy that we have an x to the third in the denominator, so I'm going to put an x underneath each of those trig functions. Now, the only thing that I haven't accounted for yet is the 6 in the denominator, so I'm going to move that 6 in the denominator out in front as a 1 sixth coefficient. Each of these limits as x approaches 0 is equal to 1, so I've got 1 times 1 times 1 with that extra coefficient of 1 sixth out in front, so this limit should be equal to 1 sixth. Again, enter this in your graphing calculator and see if your table of values gives you that. With our next example, we need to take a look at this limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 2x over 5x. When we do that, we see that we've got to do some different things with our coefficients. We have to make sure that our angle of 2x matches our denominator. To make a 5x become a 2x, one way of doing that is to multiply by 2 fifths. But if I multiply the numerator by, or the denominator by 2 fifths, I also have to multiply the numerator by 2 fifths. 2 fifths times that 5x is giving me a 2x. So I now have 2 fifths times the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of 2x over 2x. That limit is equal to 1 because the angle matches the denominator. 2 fifths times 1 gives me an answer of 2 fifths. So my whole answer works out very nicely there. Let's try a few more examples. I've got the limit as t approaches 0 of sine squared of 3t over t squared. Again, substituting 0 in for t, I definitely see that I have indeterminate. So following the examples that I had previously, I'm going to try to rewrite these as the limit as t approaches 0. What I have so far is the sine of 3t over t times the sine of 3t over t. Now in this situation I see that my angle does not match my denominator but I can work with it and say let's multiply the denominator by 3 so that means we have to also multiply the numerator by 3. Multiply the second denominator and numerator also by 3. My angles are matching my denominators. Angle matching denominator. These extra 3's can go out in front as coefficients. So right now I have 9 times the limit as t approaches 0 of the sine of 3t over 3t times the sine of 3t over 3t each of these is giving me an answer of 1, so I'm getting 9 times 1 times 1, which gives me an answer for my limit of 9. Now, what happens if I've got a combination of tangent of 5t on top and sine of 2t on the bottom? One way that I can approach this is say, okay, let's break it apart so that I've got sine of 2t in the denominator and I've got tangent of 5t in the numerator. 
Well, the tangent will work out nicely if I had a 5t multiplied right here. Then my angle would match my denominator. Now, if I've multiplied by 5t on the bottom, can't I also multiply by 5t on the top? It would help me if I did that right above the sign. We'll notice that the limit as x approaches 0 of the sine of x over x equaling 1 could also be equivalent to the limit as x approaches 0 of x over sine x, which is just the reciprocal, but the reciprocal of 1 is 1. So we can use that rule in either form. Now, we've multiplied the numerator and denominator by 5t, so right now I've multiplied by equivalent on the top and the bottom. However, my problem is I really need a 2t with the sign. So to get the 5t to be a 2t, I'm going to multiply by 2 fifths in the numerator. If I multiply by 2 fifths in the denominator, then really what ends up happening here is out in front, I have 1 over 2 fifths. The limit as t approaches 0. 2 fifths times 5t is 2t over sine of 2t times tangent of 5t over 5t. Each of these limits, this one right here and this one right here, both equal 1. 1 divided by 2 fifths actually gives me a final answer of 5 halves. And again, go back and check that using your table or your calculator graph. Let's go ahead and try one more. Again, we've got a similar format here. We know that our trig limit involving cosine looked like Well, let me take one more second here. Our trig limit involving cosine looked like this. The limit as x approached 0 of 1 minus cosine of x over x, that was equal to 0. Now, if I negate this, I would have the limit as x approaches 0 of the negative of 1 minus cosine of x over x, and then I could multiply by a negative 1 out in front. That, of course, would give me negative 1 times the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x minus 1. So we can also use this one in this form. Since this part is equal to 0, negative 1 times 0 gives me an answer of 0 as well. So I can also use the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine of x minus 1 over x. In this way, I can say let's do the limit as t approaches 0 of the cosine of t minus 1, that's in my numerator, and the denominator I've got sine of t, so I'm breaking this apart. If I multiply the numerator and denominator both by t, then this limit is equal to 0, this limit is equal to 1, 0 times 1 gives me my final limit of 0. So we're going to see a lot of algebraic manipulations with these special trig limits. So we want to do some practicing with that in today's lesson. Thanks so much for working with me on trig limits. This is a two-day topic, so we're going to be seeing some more of this again tomorrow.